a mixture of two substances is spot, spotted onto a piece of paper, like you make a spot on it, right? Um, piece of chrome, uh, chromatography paper. The paper was inserted into a beaker containing a liquid. Okay. The separation of the substances to occur, the mixture must be placed so that the spot is just below the level of the liquid. If it's below the level of the liquid, what's going to happen is the spot will spread all over into the liquid and won't really travel up. Be soluble in the liquid, and that's important, right? Because it's the solubility. The more the soluble it is, the further it travels, because that's the liquid is carrying it. So it needs to dissolve in the water. You know, think about it this way. If you get a stain on your shirt and if it's not soluble in water, you can't clean it. It doesn't move. It doesn't budge. So, B. Contain substances of the same RF value. If it's the same RF value, they'll travel the same amount and will not separate. Right? Contain substances that are... Contain substances that are colored. Doesn't matter. Like, um, that's not a guarantee. The only help color is that you can see it. Right? So the correct answer is B. Which diagram represents the structure of sand, SiO2? Now, if you're confused what SiO2 is, a lot of people probably went for B, right? Because they think it's very similar to carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is a gas. You know, it's how their structures are made, how they're working together is what gives them their physical properties, like, let's say, a melting point, right? Silicon oxide dioxide is a sand, and it has incredibly high melting point so it ha it can't be a simple covalent compound because simple covalent compounds simple covalent compounds right have you know normal low melting boiling points because they're gases and liquids they can be solids but easily meltable right anything you can visualize that melts easily is a gas or is a liquid at room temperature uh, is very likely a simple covalent structure Right? So, the correct answer is obviously A. Why? Because that's a macromolecule, and who doesn't know silicon dioxide is a, a giant covalent structure? C is some sort of alkane or a, you know, polyalkene, right? And D is your uh, polyester. Polyester, and this is? Uh, poly alkene. We don't know which one. Could be any. What happens when sodium chloride melts? Covalent bonds in a giant lattice are broken. Electrons are released from the atoms. Electrostatic forces of traction between ions are overcome. Molecules are separated into ions. So it's wrong of you to think for option D that they're molecules to begin with and they separate into ions. They're already ions, because you that's what you draw, right? They're already ions, and it's wrong of you to consider them as molecules. You know, when you're especially doing moles, you can think of them as molecules. It just makes life easier, but it doesn't mean it's true. Electrostatic forces of attraction, these dotted lines are broken when um, you heat it enough, the energy of these atoms become so high they can overcome these attractive forces and separate from their lattice so that's essentially is what melting is so that would be melting if these forces are overcome why don't i get a different color right if these are overcome that's melting and uh, c is our correct answer let's take a look at a and b Covalent bonds in giant lattice are broken. Well, it's not a giant lattice, so no. Electrons are released from atoms. They're already, you know, ions to begin with. So that's not going to happen either. Correct answer is C. A current was passed through concentrated aqueous potassium chloride, as shown. So the set of... Set of uh, so there will be two things discharging. One at the cathode... And the other and the anode right so the competition and the cathode is 
the cations which are KCl, well K, potassium ion, and the hydrogen ion from water. And the anode has uh, chlorine and the hydroxide ion, right? Now, looking at the cations, we'll easily figure out that hydrogen is lower in the series, so it'll easily discharge. So in the cathode, hydrogen will be produced. Oh, they're not talking about being produced. They're talking about what's going to move at the cat towards the cathode. Well, both of them will because they both have the same, like, it has a negative charge. It's going to attract both of them. And while well, both of them, well, like, we don't have to figure out what's going to move towards them. So both of these will move towards the anode. So the answer is both of them, right, for each case. So it's potassium and hydrogen. Chlorine and hydroxide. Answer is D. When the experiment shows uh, was sh uh, how it is was set up, the bulb lit as like you when you start the car and the bulb lit, but there was no decomposition products at um, the electrodes. How curious! Very curious, right? What is X? Aqueous sodium chloride. Now, aqueous sodium chloride will produce hydrogen at the negative electrode, and you'll see bubbles. And um, now, what's the other thing? Oxygen at the positive electrode, because the hydroxide ion will discharge, right? So, if nothing is seen, it can be A, can it? You'll see definitely something with A. Bromine, aqueous bromine. They're talking about aqueous bromine. It's not ionic. So it's, even if it's dissolved in water, it won't do anything because it'll just be aqueous bromine. So that's just a non-conductive mixture, right? And that probably very likely won't do anything at all, but it won't conduct either. It'll be a poor conductor because there's no uh, ions to conduct the electricity. Molten sodium chloride, it's the same thing. You'll have chlorine being produced, well, sodium being produced here and chlorine being produced here. So, yeah, that's not it either. That's so where, you know, strike three. What do we have now? Mercury. Mercury is a metal which can conduct electricity. So this setup will run and electrolysis won't take place. But conduction will take place and this will glow. Answer is D. All right. A small portions of aqueous potassium iodide and of acidified aqueous potassium magnate were added to four solutions color changes were seen as shown in the table which solutions contain an oxidizing agent all right so potassium magnate itself is an oxidizing agent oxidizing agent so it won't react with other oxidizing agents it will however react with reducing agents right so potassium magnate isn't essentially telling us anything. What about potassium iodide? For potassium iodide, we gotta focus on iodine. Now iodine will be colorless, potassium iodide, so it's the iodide ion is colorless, and if it reacts, it'll form iodine. That's the only way it can react, right? Because it's already in uh, ion form. So it's gonna give out two electrons to do that. To balance it out, I'll put a two here. Now with that said, is this being oxidized or reduced? It's losing electrons, so that's oxidation, right? Oil. Oxidation is loss of electrons. It's gonna be oxidized. So essentially, if it's changing color, that's oxidation. So this solution one has some sort of oxidizing agent because iodine got oxidized. Solution two has some kind of oxidizing agent because it still got oxidized. On the other side, there's two different things, right? Like um, potassium magnate is reacting differently. So, but this is an oxidizing agent, right? Two oxidizing agents do not react much like two acids will not react with each other. They react with their complementary opposites, right? So, Nothing over here changes the fact that it still has oxidizing agents because it got oxidized. So it reacted with something which is 
allowed it to oxidize, essentially an oxidizing agent. So one and two are our answer, which contain oxidizing agents. Methane, the first member of the alkane homologous series, has a boiling point of negative 161. Which molecular formula and boiling point could be the correct for another alkane? So anything higher is going to have a higher boiling point. And I say higher because, you know, negative 150 is actually a higher value than negative 160. It's larger, right? You got to know that negative values because it's more closer to zero, so to speak. It's like, you know, yeah. Oh, well, it's not a math loss. Okay. So anything higher should have a yeah, so taking a look at, taking a good look at uh, ethene, it looks higher, definitely. Uh, taking another look at uh, C2H6, it's actually lower. That's out. Don't even want to see that. That's out. C3H6 is also higher. That could be it. So I'm confused now. Right? And C3H8 is also higher in boiling point. Right? But they're talking, oh, they're strictly talking about alkanes. So we gotta find our alkane. C3H8 is an alkane. This is not an alkane. C3H6 is not an alkane. Wow. D is our answer. A student carries out three tests on gas X. Damp red litmus paper stays red. So it's not alkaline. That's what's telling me. Can't be ammonia, right? It's not alkaline. So the properties of gases, this gas is not alkaline. Alkaline. Second test is aqueous bromine stays brown. So it's not an alkene specific test. Light splint gas burns. A lighted splint gas burns. Hmm. So it's flammable. Flammable. Right? So what could it be? Right? Um, so Ammonia is out because it's not alkaline. Ethene is out because it's not an alkene. And it's flammable. I think methane is it. Why can't it be oxygen? Is because the gas doesn't really burn. The splint will burn more brightly if the oxygen gets exposed to it. And it's going to burn. The glowing splint will light a lot more. The gas itself is not really like it's taking, sure, it's taking part in the reaction, but it's not burning. Something burning is something reacting with oxygen and giving off a lot of heat, right? So the correct answer is C. Two particles X and Y have the composition shown below. Number of electrons, number of neutrons, number of protons. Uh, particles X and Y are metal atoms, not, okay, let's figure it out. <clears throat> so there are particles, um, this has, X has eight electrons, so it's uh, oxygen, right? So eight, sorry, eight protons. So that's uh, X has eight protons, and right now it has two extra, so it gives it a negative charge, and number of neutrons is also eight. So I'm taking a leap of faith. I don't have a periodic table open, but this is definitely oxygen ion, right? Why? It has 17 protons. Uh, I think that's going to be one less than, I don't know what 17 has. Close to chlorine, right? Isn't that this chlorine? Oh, well. And it has one negative charge because it has one more electron. I think it's chlorine. The particles X and Y are negative ions. They're not metal because oxygen isn't. Non-metal atoms, they're not atoms, right? They're negative ions, both of them. And I'm pretty sure we're talking about chlorine. The answer is C. 
experiment shows shown is used to test potassium bromine crystals and these are potassium bromine crystals lamp is not lit because of course it's a solid right distilled water is added and the lamp lit what is explaining this electrons are free to move no ions are free to move metal ions are free to move when potassium bromide is melts actually metal and bromide or like non-metal ions metal ions are free to move when potassium reacts with them. it doesn't react it just dissolves it ionizes Oppositely charged ions are free to move. There we go. There we go. There we go. Simple recall. What are the products when concentrated aqueous lithium chloride is electrolyzed? It's aqueous and concentrated. Now concentrated has our caveat, right? So we have our cathode. We have our anode. We have our lithium plus and we have our hydrogen plus and at the anode we have the hydroxide ion and the chlorine ion so what will discharge in the cathode is lithium we're not too sure uh, i think this is a older reactivity series where lithium was not too discuss much discussed but lithium i know is a reactive metal being a group one metal and all so hydrogen will be released right anode what's going to happen at the anode now normally in dilute solution hydroxide ion will be because it's lower in the um, uh, ease of discharge uh, of anions right but it's concentrated when it's concentrated the ion in higher concentration discharges actually the anion in higher concentration will discharge so over here that is the chloride ion Lithium is, of course, also in higher concentration, but it doesn't affect cations, only anions. Why? I don't even know, right? It's actually not as simple as that. And in a levels you can do exact math to figure out what's going on. But this is a game CAIE has created just to mess with and make chemistry more challenging. It's actually not the case. Anyway, at the positive electrode, you'll have chlorine involved like they're saying and the negative electrode you'll have like we decided hydrogen will come out the correct answer is a the diagram shows a reaction pathway for a reaction without a catalyst which diagram shows the pathway result in addition of a catalyst in the reaction it's gonna happen with the catalyst is that the activation energy is gonna lower so the speak will be lower and nothing else will change so I think C is giving us that. D is also giving us that, but the height of the reactants has changed. So the correct answer is C. In an experiment, five centimeter cube of one mole per decimeter cube sodium hydroxide is gradually added to 10 centimeter cube of, zero, of one mole per decimeter cube. Wow, hydrochloric acid containing methyl orange. All right, so. I think that's important, five centimeter cube, 10. Which change occurs in the mixture? The concentration of H plus ions increases. Actually, it's gonna decrease because the base will react with the hydrogen to form water, right? So the equation for this reaction is NaOH will react with the acid to form NaCl and O2, right? So the concentration of hydrogen ion will decrease as more base is added to it or alkali is added to it the methyl orange changes color it will only change color if it crosses neutralization and this still this entire solution becomes alkaline but you're adding less amounts of sodium hydroxide than needed to reach neutralization you'll need to add at least 10 centimeter cube because that's what it is over here right you need to match the moles so the methyl orange will not change color with this less amount of um, less amount of uh, alkali added uh, more water molecules are formed that's true because water is produced that's that's true that's that's true a precipitate is formed well sodium hydroxide is highly soluble in water and does not precipitate it's salt so that's wrong as well our correct answer is C. 
The diagram shows a boat made from iron. Some magnesium blocks are attached to the iron below the water line. Why does the magnesium stop the iron from rusting? Magnesium reacts in preference to the iron. That's true. Instead of iron, it says like hey, magnesium goes like, hey, do me first. And it reacts and prevents the iron from rusting. And you just replace the blocks once it's completely gone, right? Magnesium reacts to form protective coating magnesium oxide on the iron. That would be great, but that would be all over the ship, not just in one area. Magnesium forms an alloy. What? This is not Harry Potter. Magic isn't happening. Magnesium stops oxygen in the... No. Right? So it's just A. Pretty simple. With a lot of confusing things to confuse people. Vegetable oil is polyunsaturated, which means it has carbon-carbon double bonds, which statement about vegetable oil is correct. It has double bonds between carbon atom and hydrogen atoms. Hydrogen atoms can only make one bond and will never have, you know, more than one bond with anything. It reacts with hydrogen to form a solid compound. Yep, that's margarine, right? And um, yeah, the double bonds goes away and whatever the product is, it has a slightly higher boiling point. So it reacts with steam to form margarine. It actually reacts with hydrogen. It turns aqueous bromine from colorless to brown. It's actually brown to colorless. It's brown to begin with. Colorless. Correct answer is B.